it was not a long time when I got into the school where I was to be teaching in a secondary school that as soon as I told them ah, I've been posted here people started congratulating me said, ah, congratulations <laughs> that's a good place to be that's a good place to be so I was surprised I said what what and you know one of the teachers said look this is a good place the girls here are good they are matured you pick and choose they cooperate very well here that's the excitement and that was what he was congratulating me about It was then I knew I'm here for a battle. It didn't take one, one week when I realized that I couldn't keep company in the staff room with what they are saying. Some of you know. Maybe nowadays that schools no longer provide staff room. But in those days when we have staff room, we all sit together around like this. It's terrible to hear what fellow teachers are planning for small, small girls. That's why they are there. And if I had problem at all with the fellow teachers, it was because I stood and said, that cannot happen anymore. And I knew that there's a struggle. When a staff meeting is coming on, if I wanted to say, say no, and we don't want uh, uh, no preaching here, no. They shouted me down as if I was not intelligent. The only thing they gave me exclusive right to do is uh, assembly. That's the only thing I had right to do anything else but you know i was excited that they have given me right to do what is the most important reason why i got there they won't come on time they won't come on time assembly was to be 7 30 to 8 they are walking in five minutes to eight i took that seriously I'm there to lead the assembly. Not knowing that that is God giving me an unlimited opportunity to turn the story. What is God expecting? Sons that he could carry to the gates. Those that are strong in their youth, not vegetables. And he said that our daughters may be as cornerstones. Cornerstones. Sculptured. Sculptured. Polished. In palace style. You see what God is longing for? Girls that are fit for the palace. Girls that are beautiful, both physically, because we have made input not into their only prayer life, even to their physical appearance. We have made input into their home lifestyle, their character, the way of dealing with things. We have made input. We have made input into their academic performance, their cognitive domain is well developed. And then their affective domain 
is palatable, is present, is pleasant. They have good, affectionate behavior like those who stand in the palace. But why God is longing for this, longing for this, there is also an equally motivated and mobilized army whose decision is to produce more prostitutes. More prostitutes. Some of you are saying, how can they produce more prostitutes? He begins by when a girl becomes a dropout. You hear me? When a girl becomes what? A dropout in school. When a girl's appetite had been so over, over enlarged to the point that nothing that his mother or her mother can give will meet it. Yesterday night, you remember in the house what our brother was telling us that there are guests from the university here, guests from University of Ife, that goes out every weekend to make money with their body, and they have boys that organizes them out. Those who want to do it as contract. University guests. So when they go out, there's a commission for the person that took you out. You collect the rest. And our brother is saying that he got a wind of that and he decided that okay bring those girls to come and walk when we have an event something let them just walk for the weekend and collect money instead of going to use their body but the kind of girls that the devil is looking for are those that cannot even walk with their hand they don't know how to do anything They are so lazy that they cannot do anything. The only thing they can do is to depend on men that carry them about. That's the kind of children that the devil wants to produce. And there are teachers that have been trained by the devil to do that. And they are your colleague. We are in the same staff room. Everybody there for his own purpose. I want to put it to you. If God's desire is going to be realized, if God's desire is going to come to pass, the Holy Spirit must break our heart and give us a clear vision of what we are talking about of what we are dealing with that you will accept a commission you know what we are looking for now you know what we are looking for now the enemy is longing To produce vagabonds, reckless, because they can't do anything. So you will find that several of the boys that are causing confusion on campus, the truth, why it is appealing to them, sir, is that they cannot do anything. Their brain had been so, so destroyed that they cannot retain anything. So they just turn it to rough. 
even if you offer them everything that to make them read they cannot read they are already used to night parties those boys we are talking about their normal waking time is around 11 a.m. So what else can those kind of things become apart from arm robbers? That's what he's looking for. And I am talking as if it's only as if the devil is only doing that. What of the one that you think are Christians? Those of you that are on campus, do you see the trend of those that you think are Christians who actually came to the campus not planning to graduate? They have found a cheap way of collecting tithe and offering from fellow students. They have found a way of sugar-coated speaking. When the papa, papa, that's the new, that's the that's the normal name for him because he's the president, he's papa. When he's doing his bad day, it was a levy. It's a levy. Whether the girls are the ones to do this, the boys are doing this, just for him. So you are confused that now, in a small campus, you will have maybe a hundred Christian groups and papas. And you are wondering. How could we have so many of these and the campus is still as terrible? I want to inform you that even those ones, they are also sponsored by the enemy. But it is not offensive so that we will not know. How many of us, young, young girls, that you thought is going to a right fellowship, is lost and when such boys graduate which work will anybody give them that will satisfy their appetite let me ask you can you think of taking a teaching appointment anywhere where somebody is paying him 15,000 20,000. What is he going to do with that? That's why they have nothing else to do than to go and form a church or to refuse to graduate. All of this that you see now littering the whole society all everywhere. Then something ministry, that's ministry. What, what is it all about? It's about belay problem. If it is not about belay problem, why are they not interested in a scripture union visitation in schools? If I ask the FCS, I think I've seen the FCS officials here, some of our FCS people from the national office, Maybe the scripture union people are here. You will find that the greatest difficulty scripture union is having now is that there are not anybody who is interested again to do school visitation. FCS people, are you still having plenty of people that are going for school visitation? They're not in, there's no money there.
There's nothing there. And those that go, they are talking about there is this anointed viral for success in exam. It depends on how much you are going to invest in God that will help you to make the highest of your grade. You can buy it for 20 naira, but if you are looking for something serious, put it for 1,000. Poor girls who will not read. They are looking for anointed by you. They rush to pick all of those things. And so, even those that we thought are Christian on campus, you only need to go there and discover that there's nothing there apart from fornication. I came to a campus and as I just preached small, this one came, that one came, this one came. The only problem we were dealing with as, is nothing but fornication and immorality. And I ask, how? He said, well, you see, this one is my president. We normally do it together and there's nothing. In fact, all of us in our ESCO, that's how we normally do. It's as you are speaking now that my heart is caught. I say, God. You are shouting. Because you are not understanding the extent to which the enemy of the kingdom is going to recruit the youth. He has decided also to become religious. Almost in every small, small classroom, there's this one, there's that one. You don't know what it's all about. I'm seeing some young, 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 young uh, students who are beginning to say, we want reality. We want God. We pray that that cry will increase in the name of Jesus Christ. But the challenge is that what God is also looking for is what the devil is looking for. That's, that's where I want to stop for now. So, if this is what God is longing for, sons that are grown up in their youth as strong plants, daughters that are sculptured like cornerstones in palace style, It means then that first and foremost, passion, passion for the purpose of God for the life of the youth must overwhelm our hearts. And when you begin to step into the life of young people, you are not overstepping your boundary. You are only doing what God has called you to do. And I want you to know that you are in the school system for this purpose. I want to suggest to you that you will take the task the Lord has given you. How? Gladly and yet seriously. I want to suggest to you that as you respond to what God is asking you and me to do in the course of this day. We are beginning to understand that the field where we are standing is the future both for the church, for the kingdom of God, and for the nation. And we can no longer Treat it as if I would like to call you and ask you to consider the opportunity to raise cornerstones for the palace. 
as I'm looking at the vision that God is having for young people, and thank God for Brian Landry that was telling us about the man that dust his heart in front of his primary school children. And they said, why do you dust your heart? He said, I salute their future, not today. How I pray that the vision that God has, the vision of a transformed Nigeria, the vision of a strong church, the vision of a militant congregation of men that can take the battle to the gates, the vision of preachers that cannot be bought over. The vision of men that when they throw their lives like Daniel into whatever God told them to do, nothing can stop them. But that vision is only realizable if you play your part. When? Now. And I'm afraid to tell you that there is already another advanced party that is running with all their strength to make sure they have arrived there before we get there. The technology, the computer, the net, they are not our friends. Each time people rejoice, they say, oh, there is television now. Oh, everywhere. I used to sit there and I said, Lord, who is the brain behind these things? Because any time you switch on television, even if they want to say soap, they just want to uh, advertise ordinary Soap, bathing soap. They are not going to talk about the medicinal value of the soap. They are not going to talk about the hygienic value of the soap. They must portray a naked woman. Why is it that all the stations? And I don't know any channel that is exciting that has nothing to do with violence, sex, and robbery. What is it that the, 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 the designers wanted to teach our generation that that's all you see every day? Are you understanding? When the Nigerian films started advancing, there were some films when they have done all their atrocities and jargons, and I said, to God be the glory. I said, what kind of, what kind of religion is this? What kind of strategy is this? It gives you an impression that it's for God. But the content is nothing but, but the devil. And your children are like this. They are following it. Some have been arranged like a uh, what do you call that one that is looking popular every week or every day and eh? Sopra. Soap opera. Top. Super story. They have done it in a way that your children 
they cannot miss it. If it's on Mondays, if it's every evening, nowhere. They are moving. Now you sit back. What are the designers intending to instruct? They are sponsored by someone else. And such program doesn't lack sponsorship. It is the Christian program that nobody can sponsor. Don't you know it's, it's, it's a, a, a conspiracy? Do you know that there are no serious Christian program? No serious youth program that is teaching Christian values that you can, you know, put your television on and it's there. And if there's any, it is not well produced. It's not interesting. It is that one, it will be doing sha -ra 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 on the face, something will be scratching it. When you go to the ones that is the devil sponsored, it's crystal clear. Why is it like that? It's because there's a conspiracy. There's a battle. It's a warfare. Now, the job is here. And it has to be done when? Now. The reason is because after this age, there are no more in your hand. How many of you are parents here? And you have teenage children now. What are you beginning to discover? Eh? They are now off your hand. And what they are telling is that what you didn't do when we are with you, you are too late. You know now you have to be bargaining. You have to book for time. For your children to have a time with you. Oh, you know, we had something. I had to go somewhere. I'm traveling. I'm this and that. No, 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 no. That's all. You, they are finished. Only God can help you again. They are gone. And sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night wanting to do what you should have done 10 years ago. You are late. I'm talking to you. You are a child. He said, Mommy, with due regard to you, you should recognize that I'm not as a child as you are thinking. I know what I'm doing. What can you do? When you bring your own uh, kind of dress, and they should wear, they say, old school. They don't even, they don't hide it. They say, mommy, let's tell you, you are old school. You are old school. You can't do anything. You are old school. That's, that, <laughs> as far as they are concerned, that's who you are. You are old school. See, your own time has finished. This is our time. Yes, we have learned in the morning that it is foolishness. Have you? They are speaking foolishness with great phonetics. They are speaking foolishness with great uh, vocabulary. It's foolishness. But that's what they know. And they are no more available. Now is the time. If you want to be relevant and you want heaven to remember you for something that you have done, this is the time. I would like you to pray and say, God, prepare my heart to do something deliberate at this time. Our youth today is pathetic, with many taking on a wild character. The Christian teacher, strategically placed by God in the lives of these youths at their age of formation, 
impression and foundation laying is in a vantage position to affect their lives and rescue them from a wild future. This is the burden for the year 2006 Christian Teachers Summit. The summit which held at New Covenant Church Camp Ijokodo Ibadan or your state Nigeria was on the theme Strange Children, Wild Future, the Christian teacher on a rescue mission between 19th and 23rd April 2006. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Living Seed Media, PO Box 971, Boko, Bonwe State, Nigeria. Telephone number 044 470 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings us the word of life. Tonight, I want to take two issues, maybe one issue really, the teacher's commission. And I'm going to read it very quickly from Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2. The verse of scripture that we want to tie our thoughts around tonight may look quite, quite inappropriate. It might appear as if it is not relevant. But more and more, I know. And when I begin to analyze this little verse, you will understand that we are in that position. Chapter 2 of Exodus. Are you there? Okay. And I want you to look at verse 9. Up to verse 10. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me. And I will give you thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew. <clears throat> and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. And he became a son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. That's all I want us to read. As I trace what is our commission as Christian teachers. And I want to paint that picture very briefly as I draw the issues that are involved tonight. Hallelujah. How many of you would love to praise God for who Moses became? Eh? Huh? I saw a few hands. Thank you. How many of you recognized that if there was no Moses, the captivity in Egypt would have been endless? How many of you will understand and appreciate that Moses had become a 
figure in God's purpose that for several thousands and thousands and thousands of years and even in heaven we will not be able to complete the story without mentioning Moses. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that? Let me ask you another question. <clears throat> what do you think Moses, what will have become of Moses at the age of three months? Eh? He will have died. He will have been one of those that have been thrown into River Nile and will have been eaten up by some dangerous crocodiles inside the water. And there will have been nothing to be said about Moses. I'm not going to say so much about Jochebed. Maybe that's where we would have wanted to say, but it's not Jochebed that has occurred to me today. What has occurred to me, <clears throat> I know Jochebed and her husband Amram, the Bible noted concerning them said, by faith, the parents of Moses kept him alive despite the wrath of the king. Why? Because they saw that he was a proper child. Is that alright? They saw that he was a proper child. <clears throat> but what I want to deal with tonight is that commission that I saw Pharaoh's daughter bringing to this woman who happened now to be the mother of Moses but she was not appointed. Are you hearing me? She was not appointed as the mother. I hope you know that what Miriam, the sister, to Moses said to Pharaoh's daughter was, Shall I go? And call to you what? A nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for you. Did you think if that girl had said, Shall I go call to you the mother of this child? Do you know that the matter will have changed? And <clears throat> this is where the critical matter I want to deal with this night comes in. The teacher's commission. The story is not appearing too straightforward. So you permit me to paint the picture that I hope the Lord will help us to paint in order for you to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. So I first want you to see that the appointment that Jochebed had to nurse this child was not the appointment as though she was the mother. Are you hearing me now? But I want you to see the drama or the picture. <clears throat> Here is the woman 
that has the yearning of a mother because she's actually the mother. Are you understanding that now? But who must not reveal that identity as the mother, but as what? An appointed nurse. If she was the mother, let me ask you, will anybody pay you for taking care of your child as the mother? You are not hearing me. Do you expect government to pay you because you are the mother of your child? Oh, you are not with me again. Uh -uh. It is taken for granted that a mother of a child ought to do what? Take care of a child. And if she does not, what does she receive? She re receives rebuke and abuses from every passerby. Say, this woman, this woman, she delivered a baby and she's not ready to take care of that baby. But now, she was being commissioned to take care of this child as a nurse appointed even though inside of her she was so eager to do so because she was what? The mother of that child. And she was so eager to do it. Even if the woman, I mean, the, the Pharaoh's daughter was not going to pay her anything. What was she? Do you think she would have hated taking care of that child even if there is no salary? Why not? Eh? Because she, she inside of her, I am the mother. I am bringing a complex matter to you. The Lord will give you understanding. I'm dealing with the teacher's commission. I'm dealing with something that God must put in your life as a teacher that will make you perform this sacred duty that God has given us. I said, if Jochebed was not even to be paid any salary. Will she be cross? Pharaoh's daughter failed for three months to pay her salary. Will she, because of that, abandon the care of that child? Eh? Why not? Eh? Because inside, she was the mother. And by herself and for herself, she has a vision of what that child will be. Even though now, she dare not claim that I am the mother. Do you hear me? Oh, you are not with me again. You are with me. So I wanted to see Jochebed in these few years that a baby Moses was handed over to her by Pharaoh's daughter. I wanted you to see how did she carry out that assignment. There was something that was driving her to carry out that assignment for Pharaoh's daughter, which was unknown to Pharaoh. Hmm. It's comfortable. 
is a com is a did you follow? Eh? I imagine how Pharaoh's daughter will be wondering in her mind why is this woman so zealous about taking care of this baby even when we have not remembered to pay her her salary? Why? Is this woman so committed that everywhere she is going, she went, she was carrying this baby everywhere? Why are they so attached? Do you know that that question will be in the mind of Pharaoh's daughter? Eh? Uh -uh. This one, there's something beyond. The official appointment. Am I correct? There's something beyond official appointment. There is an affinity between this boy and this nurse. And Pharaoh's daughter must have been wondering I want this boy to know me as his mother actually officially he is my he is my son hmm. but this woman that I just appointed I saw by the roadside to carry out an assignment on wage on salary she has carried this assignment on her head that I'm wondering whether she's working for a pay or she's working for something else. Do you identify with that thinking in the heart of Pharaoh's daughter? Eh? Because up till now, nobody told her that this woman who is like the appointed teacher has a different perspective a different vision of what this child will become. May the Lord give you understanding. I really pray that Holy Spirit will help you to understand what is it that God has called you to do. Let me begin by saying something to you that I said in the morning in passing and you may not understand. I said to you that all children, what are they? They are the heritage of the Lord. And all the parents that brought them forth, whether you want to collect it from me or not, they are caretakers. I was telling a church the other day as I was taking a, a, a revival meeting on family. And I told them very plainly, I said, please, there are things that are not part of your marriage. Say so your father-in-law is not part of your marriage. They say, yes, we know that. Your mother-in-law is not part of this arrangement. They say, we know that. Your pastor is not part of your marriage. They say, that's true, sir. The elders of the church, they are not part of your marriage. They say, actually. Your closest friend is not part of your marriage, for the Bible said, and the two, not three, shall become one flesh. I said, the other that is not part of your marriage are your children. No, no. You can't say that. I said, the children, 
they are passengers. Are you hearing me? Oh, you are not hearing me again. Children, what are they, please? They are passengers that you picked along. And when they get to their destination, what will they do, please? They will get down and leave you alone. You may not understand me, but they will leave you. Some of you may have built a 10 bedroom house and say, that You see, because of children, children, you are wasting your time. In a few years' time, when all the passengers have dropped, your 10 bedroom house will become a problem to you. Am I right? Some of the rooms, you will, it, will be, it will be tiresome to say you are sweeping every, every day. Cockroaches and spiders will prepare the place. Termites, they will find that, those rooms as a place to enjoy. And I know you are not praying. That your daughter that is married should one day come and take her room in your house. How many of you are praying for that? That I have so big a house, I want all my daughters, even if they marry, they should finally come back and settle with me. Where's your, is that your prayer? The one that is very, very deceptive is your son. Whom you think will live with you forever. You are wasting your time. That boy is going. He's going home. And as he's going, he's going. He might come and just, I came to visit you. Are you going? I, I have to go. <laughs> My wife is waiting for me. So, ah, now you stay here now. Eh? <laughs> Akande, <laughs> Akande, <laughs> oh mommy, <laughs> the boy is, <laughs> is no more the boy that you know. He comes in in haste and he goes out in haste. And you will sit by the road like this watching them. He says, eh, Are you going? They are going. They are passengers. They have already dropped from your vehicle, from your caravan. I want to tell you that parents, many times you think that parents own the children. No. They are caretakers. They are carriers for a while. When I'm saying that, I am not saying that parents have no responsibility. They do. And I am not saying that parents should be irresponsible about the children they brought forth into the world. That's not what I've said. They should please be responsible. But in their responsibility, they should recognize that they are only training and bringing up a child for the owner. So I want to share with you, if you will understand, that the commission of a teacher in actual sense is just a little different from what a mother is. So I say, well, it's not my child, it's not my child, it's not my child. Actually, even the parents, if they understand very well, what should they also say? It's not my own. It's not my own. But there is something else that the Holy Spirit must do to you if you will understand. Which Jochebed understood and that's why we have a Moses that we could talk about today. 
First, I want you to know that why all the children in, this, in, in, in the land were being slaughtered and being killed. The eyes of the Lord were on Moses because he was born to achieve a divine purpose. And by the time the parents, now I'm getting to where I'm going now. By the time the parents of Moses have done the bit that they think they could do. Because they, they saw that this child ought to live and ought to become something for God. They did all they knew how to do. Do you know what they did? Do you know what they did? They brought the boy out. And what I heard them say was, God, we saw a vision that you want to use this child as a deliverer. We have taken all the risks we can take up to this point. It's difficult for us to go beyond here. We must take this child out. Let me ask you, how many of you parents wept the day you took your child to the boarding house? Let me see your hand up. Did you weep? You wept. You really wept. But let me ask you, what did you do? As you were weeping, what were you doing? Eh? You still dropped the child. Oh, you are not with me again. You still drop the child because you knew in your heart that you cannot keep the child in the house and the child will become something. You knew that the, what you could do to keep the child under your bosom is finished. The child must go. Is that what you did? You knew that there are bullies in the hostel. You knew that there are other girls in the hostel that may spoil your child. But there is an overriding matter in your heart. What is that? That the child has to leave my hand if he will become anything. Do you know that sometimes the child ran back after when we can say, Mommy, I don't go, go to school again. I don't want to go again. <laughs> Father, nobody to give me hot water to buy. <laughs> what did you do? Parents, what did you do? You sent him back. So you have to know how to cope. If at all you had any compassion for that child, you know what you now started to do? You now went to look for the teacher. And say, Madam, this is your son. No? Is that the language you used? Yes. Parents have come to the end of what they could do. And they have brought their children onto the open seas. And they know in their heart that there are dangers there. But they couldn't do otherwise. All parents, they came to a point when they knew that, yeah, this child had to go out. I remember that I had a cousin that we were to go to school together when we were now enrolled for primary one. Hmm. When we got to go to school, primary one, unfortunately, we were in the same class. And there was one notorious boy 
that we were in the class together is actually older than all of us. He was a bully. Hmm. He would just say, look, you know. Ah. Here is a child that has nobody has shouted on her before. She's been cared for. She's been pampered. Now she's meeting a bully. Take with you. Take with you. And this boy was dealing with another girl by the side of my cousin. When the mistress came and beat the boy. And again, my cousin had not seen anybody being flogged like that. Do you know what? When we got home, she told my mother, say me I know go go again. No. I'm not going to school again. Why? He said, ha! Mm -mm, mm -mm. The way they beat that boy, I know tomorrow it will be me they will beat. I'm not going again. Do you know that they begged this girl? She refused. She refused. She didn't go to school. I taught her how to read and write as adult education. But you see, I was trying to understand what happened. For me, I couldn't say I wouldn't go to school. They said, you must go. You are a boy. For this girl, if she says she's not going to school, no problem. She will soon get married. Do you understand? That's how they allowed her. I had to face bullies. You know, there was a day that boy knocked me on my head like this. And because my tongue fell in between my teeth as he knocked me like this, I had a wound on the tongue. Came back home with blood. The following day, they still said, go back to school. Ah, parents, they have come to know now that as far as the destiny of their children is concerned, they have ended what they could do. They must transfer it to another hand. But when Pharaoh's daughter now saw Moses on the open seas. I believe it was God. Call me. Now listen to me. I said, I believe it was God. Working out his divine purposes for Moses. Working through the Pharaoh's daughter. Are you hearing me? To say, I want this child. I'm ready to sponsor his training. And they are now looking for someone who will help us do what? Nurse this child. This time, with wages to be paid. Can I inform you quietly if God will help you to hear? Teachers, they are obscured mothers on appointment to train to be paid. And unless the Holy Spirit will do that in your life, you have not understood what is the commission that God is placing on your life as a teacher. A teacher is that person 
when the parents have come to the end of their own effort is that person that is being appointed to take over but with a motherly heart that is obscured please listen even though teachers they will not call you mothers they will not call you parents but actually what the parents have said without saying it clearly is that take over my place in the life of this child i will pay you whatever be your wage each time parents come to pay school fees what are they doing they are paying your wage for taking their place where they have become incapacitated did you hear me at all each time they pay school fees what they are saying is this I know if I were in position to do it by myself, I don't need to be paid. But now that I cannot do it, I transfer my right, my responsibility to you, but I will pay you. But in my mind, I want you to see that what Pharaoh's daughter said unto Jochebed in verse 9, the way I'm hearing it, I didn't hear Pharaoh's daughter. I want to show you that it's not Pharaoh's daughter that I think I heard her voice. Because after all, of what benefit was Moses to Pharaoh's daughter? Eh? I'm not hearing you. Of what benefit was Moses to Pharaoh's daughter? What did Pharaoh's daughter actually gain in Moses? Eh? The day that she would have been doing like this, I'm the, I'm the mother of this son. Do you know that even in her mind, even in her mind, something told her, are you really the mother? Are you not concealing the true story? Even in her mind, the congratulations of you as <laughs> your son has graduated. Do you know that in her mind there was no joy in her mind? Because she knew I was not the mother. And when Moses woke up and came to years and called a press conference and said, Ladies and gentlemen of the press, I want to make a confession that we have been keeping for the past 40 years of my life. Everybody say, what is that? Say, and I know it was going to cause me a lot of confusion, but I must be true to my calling. I want to announce, and uh, I would have said with due apology to my so-called mother, But she knew as well as I knew that we had no connection. Do you imagine what that woman would be feeling where she sat? Do you imagine how when Moses announced and said, I'm from today henceforth, I am no more Pharaoh's daughter's son. And never shall I be addressed. Actually, I am an Hebrew. Eh? So
So let me ask you, what did that woman gain? Eh? So I want to tell you. That voice I am hearing in chapter 2 verse 9, <laughs> I don't think it was the woman. I think it was God. You see any vessel at all to bring forth his divine purpose in the life of Moses. Moses was destined to die that day when God appeared. It was God. It was God that walked in mysterious ways. His wonders to do what? To perform. It was God who decided that I have a purpose for this child. And so I want you to note that <laughs> for Joseph, I mean for, for Jochebed and for Amram, when did they come to the end of their own input into the life of Moses? After three months, when they brought him out. Because the day she brought him out and put him into the basket, she has wept all her tears. Am I right? She has said, Lord, I have finished all I could do. This baby came through my womb. I believe you have a purpose for him. And I have done all I know how to do. And I know I cannot do anything more. I'm releasing him. If he dies, that's all. That's what she said. And they were only standing afar off to see whether God will take over or Egypt will take over or the devil will finish the boy. I'd like to tell you, whenever a, 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 they brought a child to the school, all they are saying is this. Under our hand, we have kept you for all the years. We can't do more. Go. Whatever you become, we hope it will be all right. Now we need another hand. And who is that hand they needed now? The teacher. So, what was the commission that was being given to Jacob now? Not as a mother, but as an appointed nurse. What was our commission? Take this child away. Nurse it for me. And I will give you thy wages. Now I want all of you to repeat verse 9 with me. Take this child away. And nurse it for me. And I will give you thy wages. Did you hear a different voice in that Bible verse? Eh? Whom do you think has quietly spoken but in the voice of Pharaoh's daughter? It must be God. Take this child away. Nurse it for who? Me. And whatsoever be your wages, I'll pay you. Whether it is a, a, this man and this woman that brought their child, I pray it registers in your heart. That when they bring that child and drop that child on your on your lap, and they said you fill the form and you change the normal clothes that that child used to wear. Are you hearing me? Do you know how many times I have watched parents when they bring their children to school? Apart from the tears, 
apart from all the, all the things that is running their mind, all the clothes, all the beautiful, beautiful clothes they have bought, what do they normally do when they are going back? They pack their clothes back and leave that child with what? Approved uniform. In the days when schools are schools, they regulate what pocket money you leave with the child. And they don't allow you to give the child the pocket money. How? Directly. Whom do you give it to? You give it to the, the house master or house mistress or whatever. And the child says, Mommy, Mommy, are you going to go on? He said, if I need sugar, where will I get sugar? Talk to your house mistress. <laughs> Daddy, Daddy, are you going? Are you going? Meet your house mistress. Is that what all parents always do? That's what they are saying. And a child is dropped for the next 20, 22, 23 years. You are not hearing me. When parents drop their child at the age of two, and I've been quarreling with parents who drop their children at kindergarten, age one, six months. Six months. In the afternoon, somebody asked a question. And hey, what shall we do? We that are mothers. And that we have to drop our child uh, at a daycare at six months. Must you? Who told you you must? Who told you that you must? Is that you don't understand what you are doing. When you meet parents of old, no matter their career, once a baby comes, their hand is in water. And everybody comes to greet and say, <laughs> eh? Echo water, I mean, hand in water. Yoruba people, they have to greet you for everything you are doing. They say, echo hand in water. They are greeting you for your hand in water. That's to tell you that until this child is wind, your hand will never be wet. I mean, will never be dry. That's what they are saying. And they knew that it finishes your market until the child can be on his own. So I saw the commission take this child away and do what? Nurse it for me. So, I must ask a question. What is the Christian teacher's commission? Take this child away. Nurse it. For who? For God. And whatever be your wages, who will pay you? The Lord said, I will pay. But there is a secret matter that that only has to happen by the grace of God. It is that as parents are turning their back on the children and they are going home, that the teacher that is taking over may acquire the heart of the mother 
for the next several years that that baby is going to be in your hand. That Moses came out to become what he came out to become. It was because of the ministry of Jochebed, the nurse, but with a secret mother heart. I've confused you, Abby. Officially, she's a nurse. Internally in the heart, she's what? A mother. Who dare not show it? How I wish you became teachers. But inside, you are a mother. You cannot officially say, that's my daughter. Somebody will claim impersonation. Abi? They say, what do you mean by that? But inside your heart, there is already an exchange. There's the mother inside. But the official teacher, where? Outside. That's the only way it could work. If you want to pray tonight, you will say, Lord, make me a teacher with a motherly heart. Make me a teacher who sees the children even though I cannot officially change their name. But they are my children. And I want to inform you. Are you here with me? Can I inform you? Can I inform you? We are us. You are giving birth to children. Are you giving birth to children? Do you know that it is not you. Who will raise your own children? You will also drop that child for another person to nurse it. I would like to inform you, teachers, the students that have been dropped on your laps, they are essentially those who will be your children. Your own children, they will essentially and eventually become the children of others. Will you please take this one? Because that will be your portion. No. Huh? You say, Bragbele has come now to confuse me. Are you hearing me? The one that is in your class now is your own child. All the yearning of a mother that you are reserving for your child, you better pour it on this one so that your own child can find a mother where you will drop him. If you miss this, I know you could be a teacher who is harsh to other people's children. Then you are, is it my daughter? You know, I love you. I love you. You are wasting your time. You are wasting your life. The reason is because if you don't drop that child, for that appointed nurse who should be the mother, your child will be spoiled. Do you know it takes a different training entirely for the children of the teachers who are attending your school 
not to be spoiled. You are not hearing me. Have you noticed that if you have your own son in the school where you are teaching, only the grace of God may make your own son to become anything in that school. Eh? You don't know. Do you know that? It is because you are clinging to that baby and if any other teacher were to really treat that baby as a student the way they ought to, you are feeling offended. If your daughter should do something that is not correct, instead of calling that child up in the assembly, what are your teachers, colleagues, what would they do? What do they do? They say, um, uh, you know, it's a, uh, uh, you know. So they will, they will, they will rather come and say, you know, we don't know what uh, Obiora is doing, but uh, uh, we think you should talk to him. That child was spoiled under your nose. It's because the normal process is to drop that child eh? and allow the teacher you hear me to take over transfer your motherly heart pray it into the into the heart of that teacher then you are sure your baby will be something and the ones that God is dropping on your own lap, that will be your own. Ah, may the Lord give you understanding. But you see, have I said that God will not reward you for bringing forth good children? He will. He will. But the way He will do it is that you must be faithful in that which belongs to others. As some of you cry and say, oh, hey, you know my baby, hey, my baby, my baby, can you please accept what God has given you to do now? Take this child, how? Away. Nurse it, how? For me. And I will do what? I will give you your wages. Teachers. Teachers. Do you still want to be teachers? Take this child away. That's the commission to every teacher. Take this child away. Nurse it for me. Whatsoever your wages is, I will pay you. That is the commission. And it comes from God. So, for whom was Moses actually raised eventually? It's for the Lord. It's for the deliverance of God's people. By the time Moses had gone through all the scholarship he went through, because of the ministry of Jochebed as a nurse, but with a secret motherly heart, Moses could lead that revival called Exodus. 
He could bring the people that were in 430 years of bondage. He could bring them to the limelight. Friends, I want to repeat again tonight. The trouble that we are going through, the corruption that we are going through, the problem we are going through, the captivity that we are going through is about to end. Take this child away. Nurse it for me. Whatever your wages be, I will pay you. In this child that you are taking away lies the deliverance of Israel. In this child that you are concentrating upon and nursing for me lies the emancipation of my people. In this child lies the greatness of this country tomorrow. Take this child away. Nurse it for who? For me. And whatever be your wages, I will pay you. How I pray that you will look for your wages, not just from the proprietor, not just from government, but from him who actually owns the child. Take this child away. Nurse it for me. Oh, it was wonderful that Moses.